and the office was not really about building, so it wasn't really about doing architecture with the, with the main purpose on being built. Of course that was the focus, but that just uh, very slowly happened. And uh, so it was more a kind of um, desire to have, let's say, a kind of theoretical understanding in architecture uh, before, let's say, you sacrifice uh, main parts of architecture towards uh, the possibility of realizing architecture, so built condition versus the unbuilt condition. And, and we, we always had a kind of big affection to, let's say, kind of unbuilt ideas. And that, that was the kind of main, main reason to go to, to, go to Rotterdam. And really sure I mean not really sure it's kind of difficult to say how it has influenced yeah of course it it's an influence but you know it's like 20 years ago so so things other things has have happened and uh, 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 what we are still interested is a kind of let's say a kind of content um, storyline in architecture so we are more interested about really telling what uh, uh, is uh, uh, a certain condition which is happening at the moment and you know instead of just let's say uh, fulfilling you know let's say kind of programmatic or, or functional needs so it's really about telling a certain condition or also let's say to uh, to some extent um, being really analytic on what is there being really sharp and analytic without emotions in describing what is really there. So I, I, I think what we, what we uh, now understand is that, you know, it's not about producing huge visions, but I think it's more interested to have the talent to understand what is there. And maybe that's really visionary, you know, to understand what is actually happening instead of just imposing, let's say, a great vision of something. So I think maybe that's something uh, we, we took uh, uh, from there. Um, when you go there, uh, you learn how, uh, you learn to understand the, the way to build things. Not only, let's say, by technology, but also structurally, but also physically, you know, all those kind of things. So it's really kind of a technical background that I think is a very well uh, it's a very good, let's say, backpack, uh, but uh, it, it's not enough. You know? It's a very good backpack, but it doesn't. Uh, uh, um, um, it's not satisfying to do architecture. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's only the one side. So architecture always had this kind of technical uh, side, but then it's it also has a very intellectual side. You know, so architecture is a mental gap. Yeah, it's a mental discipline, and. If you don't have a technical background for a kind of mental discipline, it's really hard at the end to do architecture because I mean, there's so many people involved, you know. And a big part of, of, of architecture, of course, it's, it's a technical uh, thing, but you just have to know how to do things and then you can start to think beyond it. So, so it has a serious influence. I still think it has a certain influence. I still think it's a very uh, especially, let's say, the kind of the ground course is very well educated ground course. If you come from a very technical background, and then you know the first thing we did is like you know going away and going to a place which exactly has no technical background, you know, at that moment. So basically, it, it was just a kind of an escape. Uh, uh, a kind of mental escape, you know. It, it was about uh, not learning how to build, but you know, understanding of what you really want to build. Yeah, and then basically you could come back and then really build, you know. But but if you only know how to build, you probably end up with just building, you know. <laughs> and probably this just building has no relevance.
I mean, concrete is, is a liquid condition, and, and, and so it's all depending on where you pour it in. Yeah, so the tradition in Switzerland in terms of concrete is because Switzerland has a huge tradition in carpentry work. So we have an incredibly sophisticated carpenter uh, 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 work, and basically those guys are responsible to do all the foam work. Yeah, and of course, you know it has been uh, sophisticated over years and years and re years, and now you do it in steel. But but so that's the one side. So Switzerland has this tradition of uh, um, working with really good materials and with uh, small companies, not huge companies. You know, so middle-sized companies, middle-sized companies, companies like you know, 50 to 250 to 300 people, right? But not like huge enterprises, yeah? Because a huge enterprise has a completely different uh, 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 production uh, mode. Yeah? So the whole structure of Switzerland is like kind of medium-sized uh, uh, enterprises, and then you have medium-sized enterprises which have great tradition in, in carpenter work, but you also have a kind of great tradition in metal work. Yeah, so, so basically the carpenter and the metal guy, those are the only two guys on construction side who are working on the mill. Right? So the metal guy, if you order something which is 455.5 millimeters, you get 455.5 millimeters. You, know? you don't get 456. Yeah, you really get that. Yeah. And that the, the is one of the reasons is, of course, that you know uh, Switzerland has a huge tradition in kind of mechanical industry. I mean, all this kind of watchmaking and kind of you know super small conditions, you know, which are you know kind of things mechanically need to kind of you know uh, be connected. Uh, so, so those I think are the main uh, structural conditions why you have, let's say, a building industry which is performing at the outrageous level. It's it's a it's a even longer tradition in you know working with carpenter work for you know hundreds and hundreds of years. So so what you see is basically that it's not really a technological issue, but it's really a a, a structural issue in terms of how are the enterprises structured. And so if you are you know uh, dealing with large scale enterprises, the quality is just down the drain, it just drops down. So the, that's that's one of the main structural reasons why why in Switzerland you can still do, let's say, building with building technology, which is based on small uh, uh, enterprises, which are absolutely producing high-end uh, products. Uh, that's the, the, the main difficult thing in, in, in architecture. It, I mean, it's a it's a medieval technology, you know. I mean, come on, concrete pouring concrete is really medieval technology. You know? You have somebody who's doing wood, and then you have somebody who's putting the, the rebars in, and then you have somebody who pours, you know, the concrete in there. So there's many, many uh, uh, working uh, uh, steps. It's not like the car industry, you know. There's almost no development, let's say, uh, besides technological development on the recipe of concrete, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and so on and so on. When you talk about the concrete, you know, the, since since let's say the, the the concrete is so clear in the way you do it that when when it becomes to very specific um, problems, um, what you change is basically very few things in the setup of doing concrete. So that's that's the, the development from one project to the other. Also, we have huge, yes, like huge spans of concrete uh, uh, partitions. So, so uh, it's really important that uh, the foam work is like ultimately tight. Yeah? So you you only look at those particular things, and then you make it super tight. What I'm saying is like so. The idea, since 
the concrete has exactly those two parameters. It's like either its recipe, yeah? what do you pour, or how do you, or in what do you pour it. Those are the two, two, two parameters, you know, and those you manipulate. Yeah? It's very difficult if you do it at once and manipulate both, because it gets slightly out of control. Yeah? So don't really experiment with like super sophisticated concrete and super sophisticated foam works. You know, it's going to be super hard. Yeah. So, so that's the, the interesting thing about adjusting um, technology towards a very specific architectural expression, which then basically needs the, the right technology to... to Now, what we really like about exposed concrete is that uh, 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 you do it, you're done. That's what I like about it, you know. There's not somebody coming who's overpainting it, over hiding it, and you know, you just, it's, it's such a direct material, you know, you do it, afterwards, you know, you put the window in it, it's, the building's gone. So at the, at the very early phase, you get basically your architecture. And that's the great thing about, about uh, concrete. It's, uh, that's the fantastic thing about concrete, is that it's structure, but at the same time, it's really your surface. Yeah. So it becomes architecture. And you know, if you look at all the other buildings, which you know, are layering different coats on top of its structural regime, one-to-one, -one, uh, or in psychology, you know, this kind of Rauschenbach test, you know, that's kind of yeah. Saying, yeah? Okay. This is concrete, you know, so this is your phone, <coughs> right? this is your concrete, and this is the one-to-one -one image, yeah? So what you get here, you get also here, just in a different substance, yeah. So, you know, we are really interested in, like, slowly changing them a couple of things, so we would be really happy to uh, uh, one day pour in glass, because then your surface looks like this. It's just concrete. Wow. You know, so, so but it's a, it's a kind of, you know, uh, you have to wait for the right project and you have to wait for the right client and you have to wait for, you know, the, 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 the real thing. But that's the great thing about concrete. But sometimes uh, you look for different technologies, yeah? I mean, at the moment we do a lot of concrete buildings, right? So we have a lot of concrete buildings on the construction or almost finished. So. And, and we, basically we see a certain kind of development going on now. Yeah? And, and the, the question is just that, you know, you, you need to realize that at a certain moment, so what kind of technology would be the next step? And then you could essentially adapt. But it's it's a very slow process, you know. It's not like I mean, it's like building anyway. It's very slow, so you have a lot of time to think about it. I would be really interested in in doing a massive house, you know, which inside outside is just one thing. So you could, you know, pour concrete one meter twenty, and then you know you get rid of all thermical problems. If it's cold outside until you reach the inside, the dew point is still in the concrete, right? And and uh, uh, I think it could be very interesting to kind of go back to a kind of low tech condition of architecture. So uh, architecture has, has, in my opinion, at the moment, a kind of uh, uh, um, high-tech development, but not necessarily in the way architecture is done, but more in the way uh, 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 the kind of sophistication of the building technology. You know, your heating system, your cooling system, your ventilation system. I mean, we, we you know, we, we invest millions uh, into the technology behind the building, you know. 
which is to some extent really absurd. You know? So basically, first you make the building super tight by cutting down the, the V value, right? And and, uh, uh, and then you need a lot of technology basically to ventilate that building, to heat that building, to cool that building, and that's rather stupid. Yeah. So so we are more interested in buildings who kind of completely eliminate uh, technology. Yeah. Because because I mean the the technology is. is uh, it's, it's not only about the price, but it's all, also about the use, you know. I mean, at a certain point, the building tells you what to do, you know, and I think that's a very bad moment in architecture when the building tells the user what to do, you know. I still believe that architecture should be, or should done, should be done in, in such a way that you decide what you want. If you want to have sun, then the shade is up. It's not the building telling you the shade is down now. Yeah? So I'm not really uh, 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 um, interested in this kind of uh, permanent uh, uh, dictation of technology. Uh, if you have a wall like this, you still get punished. You know, because you can't. Uh, produce the same floor ratio than somebody who has a wall like this. But this wall might be smarter, yeah? but you get punished. And, you know, since we are all, let's say, based on a kind of econo uh, economical condition of architecture to get the maximum floor ratio, you know, suddenly a wall like this is not really interesting, even though it would be really smart to do. But nobody is affording it because he's losing so much money by doing that. So I think there's there are many different interests. So I would be really interested in in uh, cutting away all technology in architecture to do a kind of stupid archaic architecture, you know, smartly done. We are, should should start thinking is that uh, the buildings do their own job without needing technology, so I, I'm, I'm more interested in that. So Sometimes we dare it, like the campus malls for instance, I mean this is a building where it has, you know, hundreds of meters of coal bridges, hundreds, hundreds, you know. There are countries in this world, and if, if a contractor hears the word coal bridge, he runs out, he goes nuts. But it's not a problem, you know. We have built 200 years with coal bridges. You know, we just have to control that. But it's not a bad thing. So it's a massive construction, monolithically constructed. So it's not that you have a, a, an insulation layer between the inside and outside. You know? And for a school building, it was very interesting because you would have to clad it on the inside because they want to have good acoustics anyway. So you're using, let's say, flexible walls, you know, so you start adding up uh, smart argumentations for the particular purpose of the building. And then the technology is a kind of, let's say, a kind of smart way to let those people understand what they really get. A lot of energy is wasted by the wrong use of a building. You know, it's like it's like you know the normal saying. It's like when it's hot, you know, everybody open up the window. <laughs> and you should close it. You know, so it's like you just uh, you know. So there are many things which we still can do much simpler. The idea of the model is that basically you have to ask yourself what is um, what is the, 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 the architectural statement of a particular building? What does it perform? Yeah, so that's the main question. And then the next step is so how can you express this? And what we do is basically we, we, we do a series of models 
which are usually always um, ignoring one thing. So for instance, we do models where there's exactly no skin, right? Doesn't really care about the skin because we are only interested at a certain moment on, let's say, the, the structural crossing of the walls, right? And then this becomes this becomes a major uh, conceptual uh, concern, and the model is the ideal tr tool to express it, yeah, because it's immediately physical. Uh, uh, it's because uh, um, you can't fake it. It's not like a picture, which you first have to prove if it's true or not. Yeah? It's just there. You can look from all sides about it. You know, you immediately get a kind of physical presence of it. If it's like super uh, uh, thin or really massive, yeah? so it, it, it immediately has a dimension, and that's the great thing about uh, uh, the models. So all the models we do is usually, if you would look through through all the models we do, there's always something missing in all of those models. They never complete it. Yeah? So we always kind of ignore things. So what we do is that we we, we approach architecture. Uh, not by the, the controlling of the totality, but by controlling of very, very particular issues. Because this kind of the control of the totality is almost impossible anymore, you know. So you can't control everything, you know. It's like this Adolf Loos thing where, you know, his client shows up in the wrong shoes in the wrong room. Yeah, so you can't really control it. Yeah? So you have to focus on, 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 on really particular issues you can uh, control and you can steer and you can develop and other things you just uh, don't really care and this is a kind of a dialogue we, we, we're doing so, so that's the idea about this enormous production of, of models yeah? so sometimes they're structural and sometimes they're programmatical and sometimes they're only about circulation and then we only do the circulation we only show the circulation then nothing else yeah? So, so it's a kind of, um, it's immediately making the architectural decision you made physically present. Just the context is yeah. really bad. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's just bad, you know. Bad architecture, bad neighborhood, bad this, bad, you know, and 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 uh, so then you can't really re rely on on what is just next to you. Yeah. But still, there is something which is a kind of overall condition to work within a city, for instance. You know, there are certain typological conditions. You know. Um, there are certain uh, regulation conditions, there are certain heights that, you know. And, and once you, you're, let's say, on this kind of meta condition, then it is a kind of urban uh, play field where, where, you know, buildings which are not necessarily next to each other have a relationship to each other. Yeah? And this is the next level you would then basically address. And I, I truly believe that, let's say, the, 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 the architecture uh, in the city is a kind of, uh, needs to have this kind of collective understanding of what is the regulation of the city. So it's not about the kind of autistic uh, architecture which you just drop in there and think it's funny or great or, you know, and then it has no relationship to whatsoever. So, so sometimes it's really relevant and, and then sometimes it's kind of absolutely not relevant and, and sometimes it's really a moment of, of a kind of a, a new typology which is kind of directly driven out of the context. So, but I, I don't really think that there is a kind of um, uh, a recipe you know it's just basically finding out what exactly makes the makes the context and what's your uh, what's your intellectual um, decision behind it and, and I, I, I think this is really important 
because at the end of the day, is whatever you do is a kind of built manif manifesto of what you have sought, right? And that has a direct relationship to, to, to the urban condition. You know, to be to be quite honest, you know, I don't. Uh, I think it's just a great villa somewhere in the green neighborhoods is has no relevance. Has no relevance, you know. I mean, it's either nice or not so nice, or very nice or bad. <laughs> you know, great for the guy who lives there, great. But it doesn't it doesn't do anything else. You know, now you can get all excited about the way it's done or the way it's like this or like that, you know. But let's say in a kind of arch architectural relationship, it's not so relevant. So we would always decide for a kind of urban, so I think the urban decision is always, or the collective decision is always before the architectural decision. Sometimes you have to exactly um, uh, decide against your comfort. So if you feel really comfortable in, in, in the Netherlands, maybe it's time for you guys to leave it. <laughs> because let's say the, the comfort is, is a kind of big enemy for, for innovation, you know. If you get, you know, too comfortable and, you know, too cozy and, and you know, Everything is good. It's like, you know, you go somewhere, you fresh, you got your eyes, you got really sharp eyes, you see many, many, many more things. And if you're at home, you know, you have a kind of uh, uh, ignoring filter, you know, things which you. So, so I, I think it's, it's against comfort. Yeah. So you, maybe you go uh, uh, at the place where you said, well, uh, I would never have a day or to do that, and then you do it. I think usually it turns out to be great experience, you know. So, so it's it's more about sometimes just saying yes. You know, you could you could do a kind of two-year yes, and yeah, just like whatever comes, yes, you know, <laughs> because you have a lot of time the rest of your life to say no.